verse 31 for us. And again, departing from the coast of Tyre and Syria, and he came unto the sea Galilee through the midst of the coast of the Capitals. All right, now we see Jesus here in this particular uh, verse. We see him going to that Galilean region, I mean, going to that region of the Decapolis, and he is, at this point, he's moving away from the aggressors. He's moving away from the attackers. He's moving away from oppression. He's moving away from the place where people think he should be. Nobody thinks he should be over there in that region dealing with those unbelievers, dealing with that unclean force. And so he moves away from where everybody expects him to be. He moves away from where everybody is looking for him, and he goes, what does he do? He thinks outside of the box. Now, what's the life application on that? We have a purpose. We have a destiny. We have a calling. I have one. You have one as a preacher. You have one as a saint. You have one. And sometimes we allow history. We allow our families. We allow our finances. We allow our geographical limitations. We allow the needs of babysitting and things of that nature. We allow the cares of life, the cares of work. We allow all of these things to tell us where we're supposed to be. And we allow those things to lock up our mind because it's always been done this way. We've always been doing it this way. This is where we're told we're supposed to be, and this is where we're told success is. And here Jesus is in another region. He's over here in Tyre. He's over here in Saddam. He's in a region that he dare not go. Now, where is it that God has for you to go? What is it that God has been developing in your spirit, God has been developing in your mind, and it makes no sense to anyone? No one can comprehend it. No one can believe it. There are some things I share from a visionary perspective, and there are some things I don't. And some of the things I don't share, I know that certain people in certain settings are not ready to receive. Just the fact that I have on a loud color shirt and not a jacket and not a suit and not a tie, that says that I'm, I'm already outside of the box. And here we are at, on, at Lone Star College. Here we are in this great meeting room again thinking outside the box. There's no cross out front. There's no steeple out front. And here we are, instead of shouting, instead of preaching, we're just going to plainly teach God's word. That's outside of the box. And here we are, we're going to take food, and we're going to deal with ex-offenders. We're going to deal with those that are addicted to prescription drugs. We're going to bring them in, and we're going to use food as a tool to pr produce change in their lives. Where does that happen? Thinking outside of the box. Where is it? People, places, and things. That's outside of the box. We have to get outside of the box of what? People, places, and things. And we're going to look a little bit deeper here in a moment, and we're going to see this, this man who's deaf, and we're going to see one who's dumb. And we're going to talk about what that deaf really means, and we're going to talk about what that dumb really means. But what I want you to see is that Jesus goes to a people. He goes to this Gentile, unbelieving group of people that has been at war with the Jews for many, many years. Why would he go there? And then he goes to this group of people, and he stays there with them for six months. There's only two times recorded in the Gospels where we see Jesus going into this region. One time he went in and he only stayed a moment in Mark chapter 5. That's when the demonic man came with all of his muscles and his craziness and his foolishness, just like we are sometimes, crazy, foolish, and all that kind of stuff. And Jesus settles us down right where we are. But Jesus left. He did not stay. And so now we see him going to a people. Who are the people that God has sent to be a blessing in your life. They may not be of your culture group. They may not be of a certain age group. They may not be of a social economic outlook. We find that sometimes individuals driving the Bentleys and the Ferraris and the Rolls Royce, 
They don't really have money. And then we learn in, 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 in books like The Millionaire Next Door, we learn things like they drive Oldsmobiles and they drive used vehicles and things of that nature. And these are the millionaires right next door. And so we got to think outside the box when we come to people. What about places? This region that he is in of the Decapolis, why is he here? Why is he in Tyre and Sodom? Why is he in this particular region? And then we see things. And we'll see some of the things that Jesus uses to open up the deaf ears of this man and to open up the dumb tongue of the man. So we're going to look a little bit further. But I just wanted you to...